chisel and we run that along and that irons out all those little lumps and bumps and makes it really nice and smooth. And you'll see that I sort of pick up that shaving and I try and push that shaving all the way along right off the end of the, the work and that gets that lovely smooth finish that we're looking for. Now, the lathe itself is a very old fashioned lathe, probably goes back well over 2,000 years old, but it's what we call a reciprocating lathe. And that means that it cuts only on the downstroke and it's going back and forth, it's moving backwards and forwards with my leg. So as I'm working, I have to lift the chisel off slightly when my leg comes up to try and prevent the chisel from digging in. It's a little bit of a technique to get in the hang of it, really. So then what we're going to do, you might want to watch your eyes because this is the worst chisel. This is the spindle gouge and we're going to use it to round over the ends of the, the back itself. As you can see they're a little bit chippy these ones. Now some people say why don't you wear goggles. What I tend to do is time, time a bit. So shut your eyes when you're trying. That prevents the bits going in your eyes. enough weight so I can get rid of those little cracks that are on the other back. <coughs> and then we'll do the same the other end. But it's only a small gouge but it's quite amazing how quickly it removes the timber. just round that over a little bit more because not only are we trying to make it functional we're also trying to make it look pretty well. so we'll then use what we call the skew chisel and the skew chisel smooths over these curves because again the gouge always leaves a slightly textured finish now that the turners amongst you I don't know if there is any conventional turners will know that the skew chisel can be your best friend and your worst enemy all it all combined because if you get the angle slightly wrong it has a tendency to dig in spiral down your workpiece and obliterate any beautiful things that you've added to it so a little bit of technique needed there and we'll just smooth up this handle end and i like to leave a really nice pr pronounced pommel on the end to prevent your hand sliding off the back Especially if you're playing rounders in the in the rain. Every British summer holiday, isn't it really? <laughs> Just smooth that into the air. Oh, now the skew chisel can be used for smoothing the ends, and you can also use the long corner for decoration as well. So, so totally. we'll cut in there with the long tip, and we'll make a little notch. And we'll put a little notch down here as well. And that's quite nice just on its own. But if you want to make that look a little bit more pretty, add a few quid on if you're selling your wares in the big city. You can get a bit of old bicycle brake cable, sit it in that notch. And I normally give myself a fresh leg at this stage. And even with the wet weather look, a few passes, and we've got a lovely little burnt black line in there. Now, if ash smells pretty good, that probably smells pretty good from where you are. If you're working with things like apple or cherry, the scent of that is just in intoxicating. Ooh, it's good. You, you watch, all these bushcrafters will be getting one of these for doing their firelighting <laughs> now. So there you go, we've made it look pretty. I'd normally say get a handful of dry shavings. That might be a little bit harder to find today but make sure you've got no bits of mud or buffalo doo-doo in there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna burnish the surface of the wood by treadling and holding the wood shavings onto the surface. Normally there's enough heat to dry out the surface of the timber, bring out all the natural oils to the surface and put a nice shine on it. We might be struggling if it's a little bit too wet with the rain, but it'll do something.
so there you go, we've burnished that as best as we can. And the great thing now with the pole lathe versus a power lathe is now that I'm going to turn these down as small as I can, you'll notice that I use the psychic power control, the infinitely variable speed, to slow down my treadles, slow down the speed of the lathe so that it doesn't snap. Until they develop a machine that you can plug into the back of your head to control it. This is old fashioned but also absolute cutting edge at the same time. So we'll take that off the lathe, disconnect it from our very noisy generator and then we're just going to use a sharp knife just to score around those fibres and then we can just pop that off. When you're using a knife like this cutting back towards yourself always make sure you keep that thumb tucked well out of the way. A big no-no using your thumb as a as an anvil. Yeah. Shows up terrible on the old ash, the old, the old red stuff. So we'll just score those fibres. It's ever so tough ash, so you might need to score it a little bit more. And that's why we use ash for applications like this. Bats, chair legs, ash shave horse, or pole lathe. It's incredibly tough, but also a little bit flexible, so great for bows and things like that. So there you go, one bat, slightly damp, but you can pass it round. You'll notice that you can still feel the grain underneath, it's not sanded to within an inch of its life. But uh, have a pass around, see what you feel, see what it feels like. No hitting of each other as it goes round. And that's it, a bit of firewood. Hi guys, so this is uh, Bushcraft uh, Wilderness Weekend. It's the uh, Wilderness Gathering at Bush Farm in Wiltshire near Warminster and we're just about to visit the bison in their field as you can see you got caravans on the farm and all that acreage of woodland over there where we've been camping and doing bushcraft stuff and uh, let's just go over and see the bison we're having a big hairy beast over there with my mate Nige but uh, we won't pay attention to him There you go. I don't think we could get a better picture of the bison. Look at him, magnificent creature. Hello. And there's the young over there. That looks like a bigger bull coming towards us, doesn't it, Nigel? It does, yes. He's the uh, main. <coughs> yeah. Uh, the kingpin. Uh, the main. Uh, Full. and there's a pecking order he's six years old this chap he weighs about a ton here's me thinking you've been really educated and I just realised you're reading a bloody sign next to the name fence Mountain William Mountain Willie eh I'm sure he's willing with his mountie <laughs> and his duties only come into around about August and September his duties Say that like he doesn't enjoy it. Look at the countryside in the background, absolutely fantastic. Well, that's enough bison for now. Because the only herd of bison in England, as far as I'm aware. And we're out of it. <laughs> <laughs> 